transformed. The Bible says that whoever believes in their heart and says with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, they get saved. They become a Christian. And this is when we give our lives to Jesus. Jesus went around gathering disciples. And he didn't ask a question. He didn't even make a comment. It was more like a commandment. What did he say, church? He said, come and follow me. Amen? And in Luke 9, 23 through 24, he says to this crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you will try to hang on to your life, and it, uh, you will lose it. This is the message version, by the way, or, or the NIV. New Living Translation, that's what it is, NLV. But if you give your life for my sake, you will save it. When we give our lives to Jesus, we give up our ways, and instead we dedicate ourselves to following him. Three things happen. Our spirits instantly change. Isn't that awesome? Because you are a spirit. That's who you are. That doesn't change. Even It's not a question of if you will live forever. Everybody in this earth will live forever because we are all spirits. The question is, is where will we live forever? Uh, uh, forever? In heaven or in hell? Will we give our lives to Jesus and follow him or not? So our spirits, the Bible calls us a new creation. Somebody say a new creation. Okay, good. But you know what? Our bodies don't change after we get saved. If you got saved today and you gave your life to Jesus, I want to let you know that you're still going to be tempted by the things that you were tempted with before. But you are not what you are tempted by. Did you hear me? You are not what you are tempted by. If you struggle with alcohol, you are not an alcoholic. You're a Christian that has a weakness or a struggle with alcoholism. You hear what I'm saying? You know, if you, if you struggled with gossip, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a gossiper. It means you're a Christian that maybe struggled with gossip in your life. And way too many people make their identity what their weakness is, and they never find victory because they're always thinking and feeling that they are something that they really aren't. Amen? Hallelujah. So, um, so our bodies don't change. And you know what? Our mind still remembers the things that we did. How many guys, when you got saved, you still remember the things that you did, Right? And that can be frustrating, right? Because God has this amazing ability to just forget. He can forget. He chooses to forget, and he forgets. But we remember. So there's this changing that the Bible calls transformation that needs to begin to happen in our lives. God begins working from the inside out, with the, and the Holy Spirit on the inside of you begins to give you truth, begins to teach you, and begins to lead you to be more like him. Amen? Last week we talked about how your life is a message. People these days aren't interested in reading the Bible. Non-Christians, they don't care. They're not, they're not going to listen. They think it's just a book. It's outdated, filled with irrever irreverent information. But we as Christians know better. God's Word is relevant, powerful, and alive. And one powerful way for the world to hear the Word is through your life. Amen? Our actions as Christians speak much louder than our words. Amen? And that's why transformation is so important. Because as God teaches you and shows you how to grow, shows you how to walk in victory, shows you how to prosper in a world around you that's falling apart, shows you how to live life differently, you know, they see, people see things like you don't hang out at the bars anymore. Or you used to gripe and complain all the time, but you're full of encouragement. Your, work, your marriage was a mess. Now your marriage is a message. A message of what God can do if we give our lives to him. Your body was a mess. You had struggles in your body, and God answers prayer. That mess in your body turns out to be a message, a healing testimony to others of what God can do if you give your life to him. Amen? Amen. People cannot argue. They can argue with the Bible. They can argue with our beliefs. They can debate, but they cannot argue with your testimony. Your testimony is powerful. Why is this person so different? It makes no sense to me. How does that happen? Matt, prime example, because I'm a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, why, why is this guy taking me out for a movie? Why is, why is this guy get, taking me, you know, to get a ride? You know, why is this guy being so nice to me? I've been to jail. I've been struggling. Why? Because of Jesus. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 
That's exciting. Isn't that exciting? That's exciting. Amen? And, and so that's what transformation does. Amen? Um, not everything happens at the altar. Now, I'm not talking to people like, well, you talk about being born again and saved. That's not everything. Oh, believe me, that is everything. Okay? I'm talking about not everything get an- gets answered right away at the altar. Sometimes things take time. Amen? And that's what I'm talking about when I say transform. One of the most important things to me in my life is my marriage. And my marriage has been transformed. I've been a Christian all my life, so I'm not going to, I don't have this huge testimony of all these horrible things that happened in our marriage, but I will tell you this, our marriage is better. Why? Because husbands, when you read the word and you allow God to move in your life, you get transformed into a better husband. Wives, when you get into the Word and you spend time um, loving the Lord and hearing His Word and doing it, your life gets transformed. And when husbands and wives get together and allow God to transform their life, a miracle happens. Their marriage is transformed, and it's a message. It's a message to all those people that have had marriages who have fallen apart. It's a message to all those sons and daughters who have had fathers and mothers split apart. It's a message that says, you know what? With God, all things really are possible. Amen? Is our church perfect? Absolutely not. I say this all the time. I'm going to say it again. You know, if, if the, who was the first person in the church this morning? Pete. What time did you commit, Pete? 830. Okay, so as of 8.30 this morning, the church came in perfect because Pete came in the house. Pete's like, oh, geez, thanks, Pastor Jeff. really appreciate that. And if he doesn't want to admit that it became imperfect, and if the whole praise and worship team doesn't want to admit that they're imperfect, I know that they are, I'll say this. As soon as I walked in the building, believe me, this church became imperfect. But what happens when the people in the church yield themselves to hearing and doing the word? They love God so much that they just have to do what he says. They become transformed one at a time or a few at a time. But before you know it, the church transforms. We need to change. Till the last breath we take, we need to change. We need to be transformed. And transformed churches turn into transformed communities. And a transformed community can change into a transformed country. And it's up to us as Christians to stand up and not just speak it, but to be the change that God wants us to be in our lives. We need to be an example, a testimony. Things will change. Somebody say yes. Romans 12, so that's the process. Romans 12, believe me, this building was imperfect when we came here. Every time we dug into something, there was something else that needed to be fixed. Amen? Amen? It was a, it's a wonderful gift. The building was given to us with a grant to fix it. Hallelujah. Praise God for our gift. But there was some transforming that needed to happen. I remember walking through the building with Phil, and Phil's like, okay, listen, we got to get that out. You know, we dig at a wall, and we think, oh, well, we'll just cover it with some sheet right now. Listen, the two-by-fours have got to go. We've got to get back to the foundation. We've got to coat it to make sure there's no water. We need to make sure that there's no mold. We need to make sure that it's clean. And then we need to cover it. Then we need to put new two-by-fours on it. And then we need to put drywall on it. And then we need to paint it. And then we need to lay down carpet. And before you know it, rooms one at a time were transformed into something different. This week I had two tours in the church. A tour from one of our funders that helps us with our community center. And a tour with a principal and a couple um, counselors within the schools. And I showed them pictures when we came in. This is what this room looked like. There was tables. There was no carpet. There was no stage. Electricity was not good. This is how it looked before. Wow. This is how it looked now. Holy cow. Spoke to them. Downstairs, I went through our kids' room, and I said, do you guys remember the bar that was here? Because downstairs is just a big bar. That's what it was. A big bar. And so in, there was a cooler, um, a beer cooler with bricks, and we had to knock those bricks down, and we had to carry them out on our backs in order for it to be transformed. And I said, you guys remember when it looked like this? And they're like, oh, yeah. I said, well, now look at it. Like, holy Toledo. It spoke. Transformation speaks to the Amen? 
And that's what will speak to your world. Somebody say, yeah. That wasn't in their notes, so you get it for free. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Verse 2 especially. Don't conform to this world, but be what? But be what? Right, by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to approve God's perfect will. Amen. I'm going to say some very bold comments to you. Because we, I said we, because there's three more people besides you guys here, me, myself, and I, we, amen. If we are not allowing God to transform us by his word, we will never see his perfect will in our lives. Let me say that again. If we are not allowing God to transfer us by his word, we will never see God's perfect will in our life. If you will dedicate yourself to hearing and doing the word, change for you for the good is absolutely inevitable. You will change. Amen? James 1, 21 through 25. I want to show you this through the whole word real quick, just three verses. Because bringing things into contract text isn't just talking about the chapter. It's not talking about the book, not just the book. It needs to be the same all the way through the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. James 1, 21 through 25. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Amen? Be, he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, or you're deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer, and a worder, hearer of a word and a doer, he is like a man observing his face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away immediately, and forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this is the Bible, this one will be blessed in what he does. So I'm finding a lot of Christians don't want to talk about the blessings of God. And you know why? I found kind of the root of it. Because we don't want to be responsible. Oh, you just said it. You know, if, if I can blame somebody else for where I'm at right now, that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, well, my marriage isn't blessed. I'm saying it is. It is. Honey, it is. Okay? Marriage is blessed, right? Marriage is a blessed. Well, you know what? It's, just, it's because God does what he wants to when he wants to, and it is what it is because that's the way he wants it. Somebody say baloney. That's not the word. Amen? You hear the word and you do the word. But some of us, we, I mean, come on. Let's, let's be honest. How many guys, I do, struggle taking responsibility for your actions once in a while? You know? Yeah, me. Last Yesterday, I was trying to bless my wife by doing um, some, some extra dishes, okay? And so I'm working on the dishes. I'm working really, really hard. And then Amy says, we got a problem. You forgot to rinse the pans, do you know why I know you forgot to rinse the pans? Because I put food on the pans just now. She opens up the stove, and I smell dishwasher soap. <laughs> In my head, I'm thinking, oh, I didn't do those dishes. Those were yesterday. That was Malachi. Malachi must have done those dishes. <laughs> Praise God, I stopped backsliding and said, whoops, I should make sure I rinse the dishes. Was the struggle a little bit? Yeah. Come on, guys. You know it. Let's be real. Man up. Sometimes we struggle taking responsibility for our actions. But we need to be hearer and doers of the word. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Let's see what Jesus said. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall. For it was founded on, somebody say, the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, he will, and it does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Joshua 1 8, back to the Old Testament. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. God is speaking to Joshua as they walk into the promised land. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according what is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. He says, observe and do. I was uh, listening to this example of this pastor. And he was saying that when he gets on planes a lot, he was saying, you know, when I got on um, planes, they would get up and they would say the same spiel. Put your seatbelt on. You know, floating devices are located here. And he said, this is what I would hear. Blah, 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 blah. Like Charlie Brown, blah, 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 right? He said, but, he said, 
one time he was on a plane, and there was an announcement over the PA. The landing gear is not working. Woman gets to the front, grabs the mic, and starts giving, um, you know, facts about what to do next. He said, I listened to her because I knew my life depended on it. Church, sometimes, I know I do it too sometimes. You know, we're sitting in service, and all we hear is this. There's Pastor Jeff again preaching, blah, 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 blah. We've heard that story before, blah, 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 blah. Don't give in to the temptation. Our lives depend on it. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Why are you always preaching on healing? Because someday you may be put into a position where your life depends on it. Why are you always talking about the Bible that has to say about relationships? Because your life depends on it. Why do you always preach on love and what the Bible says? Because your life depends on it. Why do you always speak about the Bible, about gossiping and staying free from sin? Because your life depends on it. Hear the word, church. Your life depends on it. Don't fall into the blah, 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 blah. Because you never know. Amen? When you're going to need that. Amen? Bring your Bible to church. Take notes. Don't go home and forget about the word. Your life and growth in Christ and change is you, it, you would grow in Christ if you would hear the word and do it. Amen? But the hard part is this. The more we hear the word, the more responsible we are for it. I have, two, I have a big fat dog and I have a little dog. Hershey is the fat dog and he's brown and Mocha is the little dog, and she's brown, and we are preoccupied with chocolate in our home. So, but um, they need a bath once a week. Uh, Hershey is, is, has a gluten allergy, <laughs> and so he breaks out. So he has to have special dog food, and his skin breaks out, so he needs it, whatever. So I told Malachi, Malachi's helping me, Victoria's helping me, and we're, we're getting this dog, this big, fat, 100-pound dog, in, the, in a, a um, bathtub that he does not want to get in. It's a fight, boys and girls. We were just going for it. Vic Victoria's like, oh, gosh, he's coming. Malachi's like, got his head. I'm like, I got his tail. Pick him up. Get him in. You know? And we washed him down. And then what Hershey would do is we would get a little relaxed, and then he'd jump out. And we were like, this is really good. Hershey jumps out, and he shakes, and we're like, oh, my gosh. Like, the whole bathroom is just covered, okay? The floor is water. I'm, my, my, my shirt is drenched, and he's just shaking and smiling. <laughs> Two days ago, we did that again. And I said to Victoria and Malachi, you guys remember what happened last time? Do you remember what we learned? Yes. Malachi says, keep your eye on the dog and your arm around his neck. <laughs> Something along those lines. Well, we, didn't, we, didn't, we kept an eye on that dog because we knew what was going to happen. We learned. We knew what was going to happen if we let Hershey loose. We're the same way with the word. God speaks the word. He says, you remember? Remember what I said last time we went through this? Be a doer. We'll be blessed. Somebody say, yeah. Um, James 3, 1 and 2, I'm almost done. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that you shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. I love that. It's so true. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Why does he say be careful, teachers? Because we're studying and we're accountable. The transformation that God wants to do in your life is a blessing to you, but more importantly, it's a blessing also to the people that are around you because of the testimony that it provides. If you are hearing the word and doing it, it is impossible for you not to change. Next week, we're going to dig into this a little bit more, and we're going to talk about hearing the word and the importance of the heart. Just like the Bible says that the heart is like the dirt or the ground, and that the word is like the seed. What happens when a seed hits hard ground? It never grows. What happens if a seed goes in a little bit but gets stolen away? It never grows. We have hearts, and we are responsible, amen, to keep our hearts right before the Lord by his grace and mercy so that we can receive the word. And later in that very end of that verse, it talks about how we produce fruit. And we talk about God, people seeing the miracles of God, but you know what I think a miracle is? Patience. Fruit of the Spirit. Patience is a miracle from God. 
You know what else I think a miracle from God is? Love. Self-control. These are fruit that come up out of our lives when we receive the word and allow God to transform it. But there are some things in our hearts that will cause our heart to become hard. We're going to study that so you can keep an eye on your heart and make sure that it's all ready for the word of God. Amen? All right, cool. God is good. Amen? All right. Val, could you come on up and could somebody go get Pastor Dennis? And I'll start a little bit. Why don't we all stand up? Hallelujah. Awesome.